Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to discuss paramagnetism. Paramagnetism is a phenomena that is associated with the spin of unpaired electron in an atom. You may know that we have three types of magnetism. One is called diamagnetism, the second is called paramagnetism and the third one is called ferromagnetism. The diamagnetism is associated with the orbital motion of the electron while the paramagnetism and ferromagnetism are associated with the spin of electron. You need to keep in mind that this paramagnetism appears due to the spin of unpaired electron because uh, in an atom when two electrons pair together so uh, they are paired in the spin up and spin down state. So if one electron has a spin up and that is paired with another electron in the spin down state so uh, both the electron cancel their magnetic moment with each other and there is no paramagnetism associated with that atom or that element. You know that the spin of uh, electron is associated with a magnetic moment of one bar magnetar. So if in an atom we have one unpaired electron so the magnetic moment of that uh, atom is one bar magnetar and if there is two unpaired electrons so the magnetic moment of that atom is two Bohr magneton and if in an atom there are three unpaired electrons so the magnetic moment is three Bohr magneton and so on. You know that we have S, P and D F state in an atom so maximum number of unpaired electrons in the S state is equal to one because in S state you have two electrons so uh, if there is only one electron so uh, that will be unpaired and the second electron will be paired so an S uh, state can only accommodate one unpaired electron. Similarly, in P state, we have six uh, electrons. So the maximum unpaired electron in the P state could be three. Similarly, the D state can accommodate 10 electrons. However, the maximum number of unpaired electrons could, could be five there. You must keep in mind that it is not necessary that P state will always have three unpaired electrons. It could have two, one, or maximum three unpaired electrons. Similarly, a D state could also have one, two, three, or four, and maximum it will have five unpaired electrons. And similarly, for F state, we will have maximum unpaired electron is seven. Now, we are going to um, calculate uh, different properties of the paramagnetism using a partition function. Specifically, we are going to derive the Curie law of paramagnetism. So this is the um, partition function. Now, if we have a magnetic dipole uh, represented by mu b placed in a magnetic field H, so the potential energy of this uh, magnetic dipole is given by this relation, where theta is the angle between mag magnetic moment and the, and the applied uh, magnetic field H. Now, you know that the spin magnetic moment would either be in parallel or anti-parallel orientation to the uh, applied magnetic field. Therefore, the possible energy levels are this one for the parallel orientation and this one for the anti-parallel orientation. You see here, this is the magnetic moment and this is the applied magnetic field. So, there are only two possible orientation, either spin, uh, 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 spin up or spin down orientation and there is no other possibility of the magnetic moment. That is why the spin of the magnetic moment is half, only two possibilities are there. You may know that. Now, this magnetic moment, uh, this um, energy level and this energy level, they are uh, non-degenerate. That is only one energy state exists because the uh, degeneracy is associated with the angle theta and for the uh, um, parallel orientation, there is only one possible angle and that is zero. Similarly, for the anti-parallel association, there is only one possi ang possible angle, uh, 180. So that is why these energy levels are non-degenerate. So, and here the energy is different, and here the energy is different. That is why we could have only two energy levels in this system. Now, if we put uh, these values in the partition function given on the previous page, so you have this relation. So this is for the uh, mm, parallel orientation and this one for the 
uh, anti parallel orientation and gj is equal to 1 because there is uh, no uh, degeneracy now if I, I multiply by 2 and divide by 2 so you see that this uh, term in the parenthesis become cos hyperbolic mu b uh, h divided by kt so this is our equation number 3 uh, this is the partition function and I represented by z h this h means this is the partition function in the presence of the applied magnetic field h we will use this equation in the uh, in the later uh, equation now let's suppose that the number of atom in the parallel orientation with energy e up arrow is equal to n up arrow similarly for anti parallel orientation uh, with energy this we have n down arrow so the average occupation number in these two orientation are n up arrow average is equal to this one and n down arrow average is equal to this one and how we got uh, this uh, relation this is from here so uh, this is from the max boardman uh, distribution function uh, and uh, if we use the partition function so we have n is equal to this one uh, you may remember this uh, relation we have derived while we, disc we were discussing the partition function. So, the average occupation number is given by this relation where nj divided by n is the probability of finding electron in the j state out of the total n electron uh, and nj uh, of course this is the uh, number of electron in, uh, uh, of atom in any j state. So, uh, this is the average uh, occupation number. Now, if you put the value of nj and n, so we get this relation. Now, for our case, uh, the system is uh, non degenerate, so gj is equal to 1, and there is only one energy level associated with um, particular orientation, so we have a fixed energy, so ej is equal to uh, e. So, if we put this relation, so we get this equation. Now, for the up state, we put the up arrow here and up arrow here. So, we, we, we have this equation and for the down state, we put down arrow here and down arrow here. So, we have this relation. Now, if you put the value of zh here, so we get this relation. And for this, we get this relation. Now, the net magnetic moment is the difference of the magnetic moment of the uh, atom in the up and down state. So, this is the number of atom uh, with magnetic moment in the up state and this is the uh, number of atom with magnetic moment in the down state. So, you ju just uh, subtract this from this one and then uh, whatever you let you multiply with the mu b, so you will get the net magnetic moment. So, you put all these values, so uh, you get this relation. Now, you see here, if I bring this half over here, so uh, this will come out to be sine hyperbolic mu h b divided by k t. So, that is here and this is sine, so you could like this and uh, sine by cos is tangent, so you, you like this you could write that. So, this is the uh, formula for uh, net magnetization. We can also get uh, this formula from the thermodynamic consideration because in thermodynamic we know that the net magnetic moment is equal to the minus uh, partial derivative of the helium uh, free energy function uh, with respect to h at constant h and this is given in the book of Selinger at page number 229. So, we know that f is equal to this. We have derived this when we were discussing the partition function. So, what you do? You just um, take the partial derivative of this function. So, uh, here n is a constant, one is constant, so we could only apply the partial derivative over uh, log of zh. So, you are here, so you just put the value of zh and take the uh, partial derivative with respect to h. So, this is the value of z h. Now, if you uh, take the derivative with the log, so this is 1 over 2 cos hyperbolic this, the, then derivative of the cos hyperbolic is sin hyperbolic and then you uh, take the derivative of this one, so you are here.
Now, if you arrange this, so you are here. So you see that uh, equation five and equation number six is exactly the same. It means that the statistical and thermodynamic concentration give rise to the same result. Now, uh, we have two uh, results. One, when we have a strong applied field at low temperature. So in that case, this mu B H divided by KT is quite higher number and the tension of this will be nearly equal to 1. If we use this uh, um, approximation in the equation number 5 or 6, so we get this relation. And this is the case when all the magnetic moments are uh, aligned parallel to the applied magnetic field and we call it the saturation magnetic moment. That is why a subscript SAT is added to this uh, magnetic moment. So this is the case when all the magnetic moments are aligned. So n is the total number of magnetic moments and they are perfectly aligned in the direction of the magnetic field. Now if you consider the second case where the field is weak and the temperature is high, so this value become smaller and if we um, apply the tangent however to a smaller value, so this gives us the same value. So if we put this uh, um, uh, approximation and this equation which was on the previous page so you will have this value and this equation for example if you rearrange this so you have this relation so n mu b and k are constant so you can put it another constant c and this equation number eight is known as the curie law of paramagnetism where the c is equal to this one and this is called the curie constant so you see here and in this equation number 8, the magnetization is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field and inversely proportional to the temperature. That is, the applied magnetic field tend to uh, um, uh, orient the, mag uh, the magnetic moment along the direction of the magnetic field while the uh, temperature gives rise to the randomization of the um, magnetic field. That is, it uh, um, disturbs the uh, orientation. So uh, this was uh, all about the paramagnetic uh, um, behavior of the material and ferromagnetism and we derive the Curie law of paramagnetism purely on the basis of statistical concentration. There is uh, another important aspect of negative temperature associated with this uh, lecture uh, because you know that uh, when we talk about the Kelvin temperature, so we never talk about the negative temperature. However, in case of the um, centigrade scale or for a higher scale, we have the negative temperature value. So there is a logic behind this uh, uh, reason that why we don't have a negative temperature. So we will learn it today. So. Uh, ratio of the average occupation number in parallel and anti-parallel orientation is given by this relation. So now you can uh, further simplify it. So after the simplification, you have this value. Now if you apply the log on both sides, so uh, you have uh, this relation. From here you can find the value of t. So the t is given by this relation equation number nine. So now we have. Uh, two different possibilities for positive and negative temperature. Keep in mind that the, uh, orient the energy in the up orientation is always lower than the energy in the down orientation because this is the temperature which disturbs this uh, orientation along the uh, applied magnetic field. So if you increase the temperature, so the um, uh, up orientation disturb and the uh, um, uh, and the uh, and the uh, magnetic moment come into the uh, down orientation or anti parallel orientation. So the energy associated with the uh, anti parallel orientation is more than the energy associated with the parallel orientation. So the negative value or the positive value of temperature are associated with the number of um, uh, magnetic moment in the parallel and anti-parallel uh, orientation. So uh, for uh, E down arrow um, greater than E up orientation, if this one up orientation is 
greater than down orientation so here t is positive okay however if up orientation is less than a uh, down orientation so t is negative you see here uh, if this is higher so log is higher uh, and if this is lower so log is lower so this will be positive however if this is lower so log is lower and if this is higher so log is higher so this will be a negative value and this negative value will give us a negative temperature this you can see from here that if uh, we have this is the lower energy level with the up spin uh, and this is the higher energy level with down spin so let's suppose we have uh, one two three seven um, atom in this state and four atom in this state so this correspond to the positive energy state however if we consider this situation where the number of uh, atom in the down uh, in the anti parallel state are more than those in the parallel state so this correspond to the negative temperature however this is not possible because as the temperature go on increasing the element go on decreasing so if you uh, increase the temperature so what will happen that the uh, uh, the atom will go from this state to this state so the element will go on decreasing and the opposite uh, the anti parallel element will go on increasing however when you reach at the temperature t is equal to infinite so that will be the case when uh, the number of uh, atom in the parallel rotation will be equal to the number of atom in the down uh, rotation so this is the maximum possibility however for this situation you you need to go beyond the infinite temperature and if you go to uh, if you go beyond the infinite temperature so that is according to this equation number 9 that is the negative temperature what does it mean that um, a negative temperature is hotter than the infinite temperature so that is an illogical uh, approach so uh, we say that negative temperature does not exist mean if we talk about the negative temperature so that is a temperature is more hotter than the infinite temperature because we know that when we go to the lower positive value so zero is the minimum value and if we go uh, beyond zero minus 1 minus 2 so there is still le lesser value than um, zero or 1 2 3 so it means that if you have the negative temperature on the kelvin scale so that will be more higher temperature than the infinite temperature which is not possible so that is why we don't have the negative temperature so this was all about the paramagnetism and, and negative temperature uh, next talk will be about the uh, electron gas okay allah is